Greetings, it's Deborah Leanne, and it's been a few weeks. I'm so delighted to be back with you for a just a slice or a um, a peek into this authentic life that I am leading and loving most of the time, and um, getting to be more comfortable walking in <laughs> and. This week, I would really like to share that this last 10 days or so, the time leading up to heading to Park City, Utah, to this the Leadership Circle Summit, and the travel there, and the full conference time, and then the trip back and the re-entry has been life-altering. For me, um, it was truly a pinnacle of an experience that everything that I have been up to this point has led me towards, and which which was a really wonderful feeling. It was a feeling of integration and catching up with all of me, and the time, even though it was just a few days, it was. It felt like time stood still and the days felt as opposed to being, um, I mean, they were very, very full and they were long, but they were, um, energizing and rejuvenating and mind blowing in terms of the concepts that we got to talk about and the people that I met that stretched my mind and, opened my heart and allowed me to see myself from a different perspective. And that is what community does. It's so, so important to choose the people who allow you to stretch into who you are becoming, that can hold the door open and say, yes, actually, the weather's fine here. Come in, come up, step up with us. Um, That's what it felt like to me. There was a welcoming there without judgment of who was farther along on the path or who was more successful or it was being around the most conscious people that I have ever been around. Intelligent, heart-centered, um, authentic, um, walking their talk people. And that kind of energy is energizing for me, and normally I'm the kind of person that cannot wait at the end of the day to get out of the space and run to my room and spend time by myself. I spent very little time in my room. I was out every night with these people because there were dinners and receptions to attend in the evening as well, and just the most lovely people to sit and have a glass of wine or sparkling water with. It was just I'm still processing, um, and I and I want to digest the experience in bits and pieces because it was so so much. So you'll get a chance to hear about a lot of the topics: polarity, wisdom that was presented by two women. Um, one I believe is a leadership uh, development expert within Google, um, and. There was a guy there from NASA and speaking about the intelligence of the leadership that uh, ran the whole 30-year Cassini um, mission. And um, I, I can't even go into it. There's a There was a whole section on immunity to change, um, which was brilliant. There was another whole thing on uh, women in leadership. There was another section on the somatic awareness, um, bringing together Aikido and Tai Chi and all of our senses to be fully present and in the moment when we're doing our work in the world, Um, which of course I loved because we talked about being grounded throughout this whole thing. We talked about um, becoming integral and heading into the place of unitive um, consciousness. And it was for, 
for people from MIT to Stanford and from, you know, corporate and government and um, nonprofit and consultants that were worldwide. I mean, we have represent- representatives from almost every, from almost every continent. Of course, they do this same conference in the Asia Pacific um, uh, area as well. So many people will get a chance to hear some of these same topics or some or different speakers, but similar um, when they attend that. Um, so what I wanted to point out was that. I knew that this was going to be big. I knew that I wanted to wait before rolling out my next version of my work until I got back. And I knew that I was going to be excited enough that I was going to want to start a conscious leadership community, you know, to continue these conversations, to continue really deep dives into how do we lead with creative consciousness? How do we create cultures where consciousness is um, the foundation, that we're not coming from them versus us and um, a black-white mentality, how, how the more that we can integrate all of our polarities and all of our um, various components of our psyche and our uh, the the level that we're at with our human development each of those pieces is so critical to creating change and that's why you know 75 percent of the world is operating at a less than optimal space when it comes to thinking of new ways of being of new ways of creating the change that we want to see and hanging out in the space that used to be is I've known for the last year isn't where I wanted to be, that I am someone who sees things beyond where we are now. And I've been told that that's fantastical and too idealistic, and yet I believe it's a vision that we need to hold of where we're going um, because otherwise we're stuck doing the same things that we've done to get us to this place where we are right now. And this week has been heavy, very heavy. Um, We knew when we were packing up to leave last Friday, we, many of us, because we had just had a speaker from NASA the day before, we're talking about the re-entry into our world and how do we take all of this power and strength of being in community with these people and and carry it home with us and put it into our daily practice and know that we are connected to all of those people even if we're not in the same room with them or staying in the same resort location as them or sharing a meal in the same time and space as each other. Um, One of the things that was very, very uh, poignant and a way to to leave the space with very open hearts and a feeling of connection was the brilliant idea to have our final keynote be Amanda Lindhout, who is a survivor of having been... um, kidnapped and held captive for over 460 days in Somalia. Um, She went to be a journalist to bring um, eyes and awareness of the famine going on in that country. And she and a colleague, a gentleman from Australia, were captured. And it was over 460 days before the money was raised for their release. And the story she tells is heartbreaking and spirit shaking. And yet she stood there and could tell this in a way that wasn't like feel sorry to to have us feel sorry for her, but in a way that showed us how strong the spirit can be. It was so brilliant. There was not a dry eye 
out of the 185 or whatever people there. And at the end, she walked away from the podium and her notes and she said, I just need to tell you something that your, I can feel your heart connecting to mine, each of yours connecting to me. And it's giving me a strength that I really am going to call upon next week, meaning this week, when she had to face one of her kidnappers who was appearing in court. He'd been found and was being brought in front of the Canadian court. And she had to tell her story on the witness stand on Monday and Tuesday. And she said, the strength of all of your hearts right now, I feel that. And I'm going to hold that with me when I go into the courtroom. And it was incredible how we so often feel that we have to do these things and face these, and I'm not that I've ever even experienced anything like hers, her experience, but, but that we have to face so much of the stuff we don't want to look at alone. And I'm not trivializing. I mean, I am, believe me, the whole thing in Las Vegas, the whole, um, tragedy um, in that they're still recovering from and probably will be for, I don't even know, years maybe in Puerto Rico and other spaces in the Caribbean. I, I get it. This is big. Our world is shifting and changing and there's a lot of heart breaking news every single day and lives being lost. I mean, and then people fighting over the laws of how did that happen versus what are we going to do to prevent it from happening again? I don't want to look back at how it all happened as much as I want to look at what can we do to lead our world into a new space. And for that, I'm asking for you to connect to yourself and to everyone in your circles, in your family, in your community we all need to come together now more than ever. And this whole Black Lives Matter and Blue Lives Matter and, you know, the whole race and sex and culture and um, religious differences that we are experiencing all over our planet, um, these are just opportunities for us to see what we don't want any longer. I choose to look at them in that way that it still means there's things that are at unrest within each of us. And there's probably a lot of unrest within our intimate relationships. I know there's stuff going on in my own family. And I know that it's time for me to sit down and be real and not via text, not via, you know, step, step toeing around the, the stepping around or tiptoeing around the, the issues. It's a time to get real and share from the heart. And you know what? I did that with strangers last week. And for some reason, I guess that's easier than maybe with the people that we love. But it was a reminder of how important it is to invest in the relationships here at home just as much as I did last week at that conference. And so I'm going to just lead us through a very calm and connecting opportunity right here, right now with ourselves. And what I'm wanting to bring in is an opportunity for us to heal the places where we feel that we are broken and we have holes and missing parts of ourselves. And each time we heal another bit of ourself, it allows us to have that fullness and the permission to shine that much more brightly in our relationships and in our, um, in our work in the world. And right now we all need to be as whole and holy as possible as we move forward. So let's just start by breathing together and energetically, wherever you are, whenever you listen to this, let's just pretend that we're actually sitting in the same circle at the same time with our knees all facing inward in the circle and we're our bottoms you know just wiggling back and forth to find that perfect soft spot on the cushion 
and our spines straight and our shoulders down away from our ears and our heads tall and our necks long and our shoulders back so that we can really open our heart space and let's breathe in allowing our belly to swell big and round and as we exhale let's let go anything that isn't here with us right now in with new energy and out with anything that is no longer ours no longer pertinent again in through the nose allowing the belly to get big and full and exhaling and letting whatever we no longer need want whatever no longer serves us to fall away and as we call in our power and our energy and our attention right now let's just pretend that we are a magnet as we are and that all of the places where we may have left a part of ourselves somewhere or with someone we're just going to ask for all of those places to be returned all the pieces of our heart our psyche all the places where we have felt like we've broken off part of our imagination our vision our opportunity to please and be pleasured to delight ourselves the fun the creative joy-filled children that we used to be at some point we want all that to come back we want to be able to access the full spectrum of who we are that is who is needed now so we allow all of those places and pieces of ourselves even if it brings up the memories of when you felt these different emotions to come forward and be here in our heart in our lower belly right now and the last thing that i want to do is to connect us we are connected automatically to the electromagnetic center of the planet just by sending down our energy and our awareness from the place that we're sitting from our feet on the floor and we allow that energy to just flow between us recognizing and thanking that flow of energy knowing that it can energize us and take away the extra frenetic anxiousness that we do no, do not that does not serve us that adrenaline kind of stuff let's send that down and and pull up really clean beautiful new creative energy and then at the same time we're connecting straight up into all that is the stars the heavens the planets all the awareness that is there for us to connect and um that is actually watching what's going on on earth in a very um supportive way and there and you know i sometimes look up at the sky and i and i just say thank you i know i know that you want us all to do our highest and best and thank you for helping me to remember that i am not just this body but that i am a part of all of that energy that's out there that creative never have been before energy and the love the creative love energy that brought us all into being so we just allow that to flow in and around us now and from this space just slowly breathing in who we are remembering our passion for what it is that we care so deeply about in this world because everybody has a little bit of different passion of what is what really turns them on what turns them turns their light on what they know they're here to be involved in and change or create and then let's just tap in to your purpose you know all of those strengths and experiences that have gotten you here that are now guiding you towards how to take those 
and continue that purpose that you know you're called to do, fueled by your passion. And the third is to really find the joy. Where is the pleasure when you bring your passion and purpose forward? Does it bring a smile to your face? Does it bring a sense of, ah, oh, yes, that is who I am. That is what I'm here to do. And thank you for this opportunity to show up and share me with the world. And the last piece of this is who are your people? Who are you here to connect with? Someone might come to mind. Someone, a face might come to your, you know, appear in front of you. Or you may not see or hear or know anything in this moment. But just keep asking, who am I meant to connect with today? Who needs to hear from me? How can I forward my growth and expansion by connecting with someone else today? Because whether it's a teacher or a student, whether you're sharing your wisdom or not, doesn't really matter. Because as we grow and share, it allows us to step more into our highest form of being. And that's what I felt so strongly last week. And I have such gratitude for each of the people that I interacted with, which was probably about 100 out of the 180. I don't think I met everybody in the room, but I met a lot. And considering I knew zero when I got there, it was really quite exciting to meet that many people in the span of a three-day uh, conference. The last thing is now that you know someone that is calling you wanting to connect with you, that you feel inspired to go and connect with, I would, I'm would. i just curious if you can make a promise to yourself to move and take action on that. Will you reach out to that person? And it might be writing a note, and I highly suggest a handwritten note, not an email. It might be calling them on the phone and it might be going and knocking on their door and it might be connecting with them, you know, electronically to set up a time to meet in person, whatever feels right. But I suggest that you take action on it now. There's something really powerful. I got a lot of peas going on there. Um, when we get the inspirational nudge to connect, and then we do take action, that's when you know you've, the universe has got your back, you know? It's when you know that the momentum is um, happening to, you know, the universe is conspiring for you. And um, on that note, I just would be curious to hear from you where this takes you. What would What was your... Um, nudge to connect to grow into the next level of you if you're interested there's still space in my small and intimate overnight retreat next week and I would just be delighted to have it be full of people especially I mean especially these you kind of women the women that are listening to this are the ones that are ready to grow, that are open-hearted and minded enough that they know that there's something more for them. And that's where we're going to be, in a safe place to explore what is next. And how can I find the community to support me to make that happen? Because we are not really designed to do this by ourselves. And I hate to use that term, the lone wolf, because that's what they're using for that shooter that created such a horrific experience for all of the people that were there the other night. Just the, not just the families that were impacted by the people that were killed or injured, but every person there will never be the same because of what they saw, what they experienced. And it's, you know, we don't even know what those ramifications are going to be, the ripple effect from that. So 
it's time for us to stop talking. It's time for us to stop sending prayers. It's time for us to start acting. And that's what I'm asking you to do today is to promise yourself what you're going to do and take action on and then please do it. And on that note, connect with me if you have any questions, if I can support you in this process and share this if you know somebody who's ready to listen to this message. I look forward to hearing from you and to sharing with you more next week about some of the learnings from this amazing event uh, called the Summit last week. Take excellent care of you. Thank you. Bye-bye.